Hey everyone, welcome to the Tools Track. Uh, I'm Lewis Prescott. I'm going to be hosting this track today. I hope you. Oh, we're still we're still on countdown. Still on countdown. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Lewis Prescott. I'm going to be the host of the Tools Track today. I hope you had a great day yesterday and there's lots of great talks today. First, we're, first off, we have Anton. So welcome Anton. He's going to be talking about becoming a Black Ops QA with Selenium 4. He is the CTO and co-founder of Automate the Planet, the inventor of a test automation framework and also an author. He's been speaking at conferences for over seven years, so I'm sure he's going to kick off today uh, today's track brilliantly. Over to you, Anton. Thank you, Levis, for the introduction, and uh, welcome, everyone. Greetings from Bulgaria. Uh, so let's begin. Um, in uh, this topic, I will discuss CDP and bidirectional APIs, but first, let's discuss uh, what these are. So uh, many browsers nowadays uh, have this set of tools to use the work of developers. They are known as dev tools, and I'm sure that you have used them. Uh, for example, in uh, Google Chrome, uh, this is called Chrome Dev Tools, and these Chrome Dev Tools use the so-called Chrome Dev Tools protocol, or in short, CDP. And uh, nowadays, it can be used with uh, Selenium 4. And uh, many of its features, uh, as um, we'll discuss and uh, check the documentation, are marked as experimental. And uh, often, they deprecate quite fast. Um, and uh, this means that the protocol is not very stable, not every part of it. So um, and uh, some features depend on the browser version. So you need to be careful when you use it in your test. You need to uh, be careful about the browser versions. And also, uh, it's not designed for testing specifically, but for web development and debugging. So anyhow, we can use it in, in many occasions for uh, our automated tests, as we'll discuss. Uh, and as the name suggests, it's available for Chromium browsers only, which means that you cannot use it for Firefox or Safari. And uh, to solve these problems, the Selenium maintainers have started working on the next generation uh, cross-browser automation slash testing API called WebDriver Bidirectional Protocol. So we'll discuss that as well. Um, it doesn't have so many features as CDP, but uh, they uh, slowly are moving towards it. Uh, so we'll use it for some cases. Uh, and uh, again, it's a bad idea to couple your automated test to a specific browser version. So Selenium maintainers suggest to use bidirectional APIs whenever this is possible. Uh, so let's begin. You already know who I am. Maybe you read some of my articles or books. Uh, so I will skip that. Uh, Levis already introduced me. And uh, here is um, a short agenda of what we are going to talk about. First, we'll talk about uh, a little bit of theory, how we can use the both protocols. We'll talk about geolocation testing, globalization, localization, time zone, and other types of testing. Um, and of course, later on, don't worry, uh, most of the presentation actually will be uh, code examples. We'll see uh, CDP and bidirectional APIs in action. Uh, next, uh, we'll investigate how to use bidirectional APIs and how we can use them to troubleshoot tests and pro, uh, improve the process. Um, here, I I'm going to show you one. Uh, some of the stuff actually are even not available in Selenium Docs. So I found them during uh, research for uh, my new book project that will be released next year. Um, so I will share these insights with you. In the next big part, um, uh, besides the troubleshooting, will be um, about working with network, networking traffic, capturing, monitoring, altering, uh, network emulation like speed, 3G, 4G, uh, even offline. So we are going to talk about a little bit about progressive web apps and what they are. And uh, of course, how to capture performance metrics. So let's begin. 
uh, again, at the beginning, just a little bit of theory. Uh, so again, maybe you have heard the terms internationalization and localization testing. They mean different things. Uh, so first, what is the localization? Uh, it's actually adapting the UI and the content for specific region or locale. And uh, also it takes into consideration the region's cultural and linguistic specifics. What this means? This means that during this type of testing, we may verify, for example, the translated text, addresses, format sequences, keyboard usage, um, visual alignment to the culture, time and currency formats, alignment of data. Um, and uh, if we need to manually perform such testing, uh, we can use the dev tools to change the browser's locale uh, as depicted in the image. Uh, below. Uh, actually, this screen is available for uh, from uh, Chrome DevTools sensors. And uh, as you can see, we can change the latitude, longitude, the time zone ID, and the vocal. And actually, this pairs about the time zone and the vocal. You can get them from, for example, there is a huge list in uh, Wikipedia for both of them. Um, and uh, here is another example for localization testing. As an AliExpress user, uh, you can choose the preferred language. Uh, and uh, here the page was translated to Japanese. Um, and um, of course, here the, uh, are implemented all the requirements for this specific culture and region. Um, and what about the globalization testing? This is, by the way, a synonym for internationalization testing. It focuses more on product features and capabilities that allow the app to be used globally. For example, be able to change the language of the website, as in the previous example for AliExpress. Uh, things you might check are support for multiple languages, support for different time zones. Uh, there is one more example for that in a minute. Support for various number formats, texts in other formats, like left to right, right to left. Another globalization feature uh, of this website is offering uh, personalized items based on uh, where you're located or based on your preferences. And uh, this is uh, actually my dashboard in AliExpress because I love gadgets. Um, and uh, here is uh, another example for time zone testing is uh, uh, Amazon actually is my um, publisher for uh, my three books. So um, I use their feature for discounts. It's called Kindle uh, deals. And these Kindle deals, usually, as you can see, uh, you offer a discount for a particular uh, time. And uh, this picture was depicted for uh, in the time zone with Australia. Uh, actually, this is United States, Washington, DC. And uh, this is the same book, but from uh, Australia. Uh, and as you can see, the discount is not available. And this happens because actually Canberra, Australia is 16 hours ahead of Washington, DC. So uh, the deal uh, wasn't yet active. So time zone testing is something essential that uh, you need to check, uh, especially if, if you are testing something uh, that it's working uh, across the border. Uh, and uh, another important type of testing that we can do with uh, this type of APIs are uh, is the geolocation testing and uh, as the name suggests uh, this is a type of testing where you perform tests on your website from ips of various countries worldwide and um, some of the features that you might consider testing are um, one of them is called geofencing this is a method to send uh, notifications to your users through uh, mobile phones by leveraging the geographic area specified by the user while using using your mobile or web application. For example, last time when I traveled to uh, Munich, Germany, I received notifications from my booking application regarding local places to visit. Another uh, type of feature that you might consider testing is called geotagging. It allows you to put a uh, geographical tag over social media elements such as photos, videos, QR codes, and uh, you can use the geotagging um, to implement, for example, geographically based authentication through uh, QR code uh, 
identification on uh, your web application. And then uh, as here in one of the images, you can implement geoblocking uh, to apply restrictions to your website concerning the laws and norms of a country. Many online streaming companies such as Disney, Netflix, HBO Max, and uh, more, they use geoblogging to deliver this rich media content uh, based on the country norms. So uh, now time for code. Um, in order to uh, uh, use, uh, I, I'm going by the way to use Java, but you can use it in any of the language bindings, right? Um, um, so uh, in order to use DevTools with, with Selenium 4, of course, you need to upgrade from Selenium 3 to Selenium 4. Uh, next, uh, again, you need to use Chromium driver, mean, means Chrome driver or Edge driver. Then we have in uh, in these two drivers, we have this method get dev tools. Then we need to create a session. And after that, you have the send method. This is one of the ways. Uh, so through the send method, we can send commands to through the dev tools uh, protocol. They are grouped in different domains, as we'll discuss in a minute when I show you the documentation. Uh, for example, this is uh, this class groups all of the actions that you can do from emulation domain. Uh, emulation is like emulating geolocation time zone and uh, uh, where you are. So through set geolocation override, uh, we provide the longitude, latitude, uh, and other parameters to override the location uh, where you are. Uh, for example, here below, other methods from the emulation domains uh, domain is overriding the time zone or the locale. In Java, uh, the API is a little bit ugly because of the Java language. We, we uh, for example, in, in C Sharp, we have uh, like know about types. In Java, uh, when, when you need to provide, for example, basically uh, provide um, empty parameter for the CDP protocol, you need to use optional MTA as you will see uh, in, the, in the Selenium docs. Uh, and this is why we use this optional stuff because basically sometimes you can provide empty parameter for them. Uh, this is how this works. So what is the best place to check what is available for you? Of course, the first place to check is the official Selenium uh, documentation. Don't worry, all of these links and um, all the stuff that I'm going to talk about will be available for you in the presentation uh, as resources. So uh, the first place to check under web driver, you have bidirectional. Under bidirectional, you will see that we have um, explanation what bidirectional is. Uh, as I said, bidirectional is the next generation protocol uh, that Selenium maintainers are working with browser vendors uh, to provide. Uh, and basically, it's going to bring many of the CDP features uh, meaningful to you for all of the browsers, uh, Firefox, Safari, Edge, and Chrome. Uh, and uh, when you open Chrome DevTools, uh, you will find many, many of the examples, for example, the geolocation. Uh, since uh, uh, Selenium, as you know, it's available for all of these languages. Uh, you will see different examples. As I said, in Java binding, we use this optional stuff. For C Sharp, uh, we use just properties instead of setters. Uh, and you can set them as no uh, or just don't initialize them to use them. Uh, but yeah, in, in Java, this is like ugly. Uh, when, when there are no parameters, you need to uh, provide these optional empties for uh, when, when th there isn't a parameter uh, available. Um, another great place to visit, but, but, but as you will see, if you scroll, there are only three examples for, or for, for CDP, for bidirectional API, it's no difference. There, we'll discuss all of them. There are only like four or five examples. And as I said, many of the things that I'm going to share with you, actually, I found uh, researching on myself. Uh, when you are working with the API, actually, the whole protocol is available for you. It's exposed through code. 
And uh, when uh, another great place to visit is actually uh, if you check uh, the Chrome DevTools GitHub page, uh, this is the official uh, DevTools developer documentation. From the left, you can see all of the domains. This is the emulation domain, I already opened it. And as you can see, there are not only three methods, right? There, there are many of them. Uh, and uh, as I told you at the beginning, many of these new methods, they're uh, available only for a particular browser version. And uh, many often these experimental methods, they're uh, quite often deprecated. When you click on a particular method, here you can find a really great documentation about the uh, specific parameters. Again, as with the methods, you need to be careful which parameters you use because many of them are also experimental. But this is a great place to research what else is available for you. This is how I found some of the methods on my own. And then um, I was thinking how I can use them uh, in my tests. So if we return to the presentation here, uh, this is uh, how we can use it in a normal uh, tests on your local machine. However, uh, as you know, uh, when we run our tests in continuous integration or nightly of our tests, uh, we uh, most of the time use some kind of a implementation of Selenium Grid, right? To distribute the tests across the network, running them in different uh, operating system, browser versions, etc. No matter whether this is uh, something that you implemented like a local uh, Selenium grid or you use the Docker-based grid or you use some of the commercial platforms, right? Uh, as you know, we use the remote web driver and we provide these capabilities for uh, instructing the remote web driver where to distribute the tests and we provide the, here the hub URL. However, this interface doesn't know how to work with the CDP. This is why if you check the documentation, the only, um, it's now available for you to use the CDP. However, you need two additional steps, um, except the code that I already showed you. And this is the usage of this augmenter class. And then using this augmenter uh, object, we call its augment method and passing the driver, and then we reinitialize the driver. And the thing that this augmenter is doing is actually that it's adding the capabilities uh, for the CDP to the remote web driver class. And after that, we can continue using the DevTools as before. Uh, nothing has changed. Also, uh, something that I didn't mention, but you need to, uh, when you finish working with DevTools, you need to be sure to close it, to close the session. Otherwise, there might be problems. In Java, you can wrap it in a, in a try in try block, uh, which will automatically dispose it. It's the same for other languages as well. Um, and uh, also, if you use commercial platforms, uh, like commercial grids, uh, you, need, um, you need to be sure that you're using Selenium 4 version. This is something that you Usually these platforms, they, um, they're, uh, they have specific websites for generating the capabilities. So there is a capability for mentioning the exact version of the driver. Then there is, um, for all of them, there is a dedicated capability to enable the CDP integration. Otherwise the protocol won't be available for you. So you need to be sure to check their documentation to enable that. So let's see uh, some examples. Um, for geolocation testing, uh, I usually uh, like to, to use this website, GPS coordinates, to uh, explain how the geolocation works. Uh, actually, when you click this button, uh, it will detect based on uh, your latitude and longitude, it will detect where you are. Uh, and um, another example for uh, where we uh, use geolocation testing is, for example, Starbucks app or similar apps for, uh, you know, uh, car tracking, right? So usually we have these maps and um, um, the, the app is detecting where we are and suggests, for example, uh, near Starbucks uh, uh, stores where they are. 
uh, and we need to test whether this works or not. Um, so I usually uh, use this uh, GPS coordinates uh, app uh, and um, I wrote a test about it. By the way, all the code demos will be available for you. Uh, there is a dedicated GitHub repo on the Automate the Planet. Uh, I created like 20 different videos, like between half and one hour uh, from the Lambda Test channel. Um, so each of the stuff that we're going to discuss, there is a dedicated video about it. So I cannot cover everything in such detail. But uh, yeah, the repo, all the code examples are available. It's open source. Everything is open source. Everything is uh, you know published for free on YouTube. So you can check it out. Basically, I will use these code examples to demonstrate what we are doing. So for the geolocation, this is how it works. This is a simple JUnit project. Uh, it's based on JUnit. Uh, I use WebDriver Manager to download the Chrome driver. Then I start the Chrome driver in the before each, basically before each test. Uh, then I maximize the browser. I uh, get the current DevTools instance, create the session. And uh, for a single test, I'm emulating uh, my uh, current location with these optional parameters as I showed you. Then I'm overriding time zone to Berlin and uh, changing the language to uh, Deutsch. Uh, and then afterwards, it's just a normal uh, web driver test. I'm not going to explain that. I'm sure that you are familiar, but we are just you know, clicking on buttons and ver verifying labels. That's all. I even created a data-driven test. Uh, basically, the data-driven tests allow us to execute the test for uh, many rows of information. For example, if I need to uh, calculate the distance between my place and other capitals around the world, this is what I did here. Uh, this uh, CSV source in JUnit, it allows us to, uh, for example, have seven different uh, test cases. Uh, and uh, here I separated the data uh, with commas and then Basically, for each of the roles, this test will be executed, uh, basically populating these parameters here uh, for each of the roles. So as you can see here, every time I'm starting a new instance of Chrome, I'm starting every time a new instance for DevTools, create the session, and emulate based on these parameters. So this is possible. Now, let's see other examples how we can use CDP. Um, another great way to use CDP and bidirectional APIs is actually for troubleshooting. And uh, uh, as a, you know, as a framework maintainer uh, in open source ecosystem of WebDriver, uh, for years, we had other ways to um, implement that. For example, highlighting uh, when you are doing particular action or uh, creating this, uh, this is called toast message or notification messages. And they're great. Uh, they they show just for one second, providing like a short message. They're quite useful when when, for example, as you know, for system tests or uh, workflow tests, many often we uh, create the uh, a lot of the data through web APIs or databases. And uh, I prefer many often to display what we are creating behind the scenes or deleting or doing. Even you can provide here how you located the elements or what you are typing somewhere. And uh, also for the highlighting, especially for big pages, um, it's really great to see where what the, the test is doing and where. Uh, and this is great for troubleshooting when you are using these commercial platforms or you have video recording, custom video recording in your framework. It's great to see that in the videos when you are troubleshooting the tests. There are many other ways. For example, you can print on the console, uh, check the messages in the continuous integration, whatever. But for me, it's much easier when I troubleshoot test to see everything in the video, right? Um, so we do that through JavaScript, of course. Um, so let me show you how I implemented this really quick. Uh, again, you're going to, there is a dedicated video about troubleshooting, uh, but just really quick. Uh, I'm going to, uh, actually, this is about initializing scripts. 
Um, this is not something that you are going to find in, in the official docs yet. Um, I found uh, while researching my book that there is one method called pin script uh, that it's part of uh, from get domains JavaScript. You can access the pin script. Um, and uh, the thing that this allows you to do is to initialize JavaScript code before your tests on every page part uh, of your um, of your tests. As you know, uh, for example, if you need to automate a shopping cart, you have many steps. And uh, many of them before, when we wanted, for example, to highlight this or to make full page screenshots, we needed to execute large amounts of JavaScript every time when, when we are on a new page in order to be able to access it. And the thing that this pin script is doing is that it's going to initialize automatically for you for all of the pages part of the tests uh, this script. And the thing that I did here is that, um, again, um, you can watch the full video, but in short, here I use a library called jgraal for uh, um, basically um, bringing these uh, notifications. Uh, it's this library, it's open source, jgraal. Basically, it requires uh, these two things to be in the head of the HTML page. And after that, when you have the script loaded in the web page, with just single line, for example, jgraal and the message, we can bring any message as a notification that will hide um, in one second. It requires jQuery, it is based on it. So uh, if your website doesn't have it included, this is one of the most popular uh, JavaScript libraries, uh, we need to add it. So this is the thing that actually I'm doing at the beginning. I'm checking whether uh, there is jQuery loaded already. If not, I'm creating a script tag. And uh, from jQuery website, I get their um, uh, CDN. Uh, I added it as a source. And then I added this script tag to the head. Uh, and once we have jQuery, as you can see, this is happening on, on the, in the, during the onward uh, of the web page. This is how we subscribe to this. And uh, once this is ready, I'm just loading the script in the CSS for uh, the jgraal uh, library. After that, we just regular uh, execute script, as you know, um, in, in WebDriver, we can uh, execute JavaScript. So through the JavaScript executor of WebDriver, I'm just calling the same thing that you, you saw uh, in the jgraal documentation. Uh, I, I provide the message uh, as a parameter, and that's all. And regarding the highlighting, uh, I initialize here a separate function, just a plain JavaScript function called highlight, where uh, I'm going to provide the element found through WebDriver. And here, for this element, I'm uh, getting the original background color and the outline. Then I'm setting it to red and yellow. And then I'm using, again, this is a standard JavaScript uh, callback, where uh, in one second, I'm going to return uh, the background and the outline to the original values that I get here. This is how we highlight it for one second and then unhighlighted it. And then we're going to highlight the next. And again, in order to do that um, through Java code, uh, we have this standard um, highlight Java method where we provide the uh, web element. And there is a way how you can target uh, web elements inside JavaScript through the executor. Uh, we need to use this argument um, array. Um, and after that, we are just calling the, the JavaScript function that we initialize, that's all. And in order to hook this up, uh, I use the WebDriver listener, which is uh, the standard uh, event firing decorator for, for um, WebDriver. This is a way how you can override specific, for example, we have many, many different points where that we can extend the WebDriver, but uh, for example, here, we can override 
uh, what needs to be happening uh, before any web element call or after any uh, web element call or before any web driver call, etc. And these are the places where I provided this uh, Java code uh, to highlight and uh, bring the messages. Other ways to uh, troubleshoot tests is to um, other capabilities um, in uh, is to catch all JavaScript exceptions that are um, happening on the page. Nowadays, uh, we use this modern front front end technologies, Angular, React, uh, jQuery, and many others, uh, and uh, we use a lot of scripts uh, from. Um, analytics to Google, uh, to Facebook pixels and many other platforms. Uh, and um, even if your website is functioning well, uh, this doesn't mean that uh, all of integrations are working fine. So uh, one way to handle that is uh, you can uh, use CDP for that. Um, um, so the way this works is that uh, actually, let's check the documentation to see. Uh, this is part of bidirectional API for the console walks and JavaScript exceptions. Uh, so, again, it depends on the language. But yeah, this time we are going to use for the troubleshooting bidirectional APIs. Um, and uh, this is why we use DevTools get domains. Usually, when you use get domains, this is bidirectional. Um, and from the events, there is an event listener called a JavaScript exception listener. This listener accepts uh, a consumer, which is, let's say, a method. In our case, the method that will be executed when there is a JavaScript exception will be uh, adding to a specific collection, Java collection. In, this, in our case, this will be synchronized list. What is the synchronized list? This is actually thread safe implementation, Java implementation of the array list, meaning that we since all of these Java exceptions, they will happen in parallel. If you use regular array list, then maybe they, they might be deadlocks trying to access at the same time from different threads adding to the list, and there might be a problem. And this is why we use this thread safe version for uh, all of this parallel um, process. Uh, and uh, the thing that this will start doing is that basically when there is just a script exception, it will add it to the list. We can do the same for console messages. What is the difference between uh, JavaScript exception and console messages? Sometimes there might be not uh, an actual error that you see in red, but in the console, you, you will see it as yellow. This might be... Uh, uh, this might be like, uh, for example, this message that uh, particular uh, library will be migrated, right? So um, it's a good thing to, to catch the console messages as well. Um, we, we will do it in a similar manner. Basically, we get a thread safe list, then we enable the walk. And then again, through the listener, we just need to subscribe here with, a, for example, when there is an uh, entry added, and we are going to add it to the console messages. Again, don't worry about the syntax. You can just get it from the documentation. This is available there. Um, and after that, we can print them on the console, which means that when, when you print them, you're going to see them uh, in the continuous integration job. Uh, there is a console walk. So you, you can just print them there and check them occasionally. Or if there are exceptions, depending on your on the framework that you use, maybe you can make a plugin and uh, fail the tests. It's up to you. Another option that you have is that uh, through bidirectional APIs, you can uh, subscribe to DOM mutations. What are the DOM mutations? Ba basically, this is an event when there are changes to the uh, HTML DOM. Uh, this is perfect when you are working on tools for, for example, visualizing advertising. Uh, as you know, these pop-ups that they they, they are added, uh, and uh, or some asynchronous JavaScript when when particular parts of the web page are hidden or removed, etc. 
Uh, again, we subscribe similarly uh, to these DOM mutations. And uh, later on, basically, as part uh, um, of what we added to the list, we have the attribute name, the old value, the current value, and the location, which is perfect for, again, for troubleshooting. So uh, we have around 10 minutes. So let's talk about the second part about capturing and monitoring traffic. Uh, probably you have used the network tab. Uh, nowadays, it's much easier. Before we use custom proxies, but now we can use uh, CDP. It's excellent for security testing performance and uh, page synchronizations. One of the things that you can use it is, uh, I wrote about that in one of my books about design patterns. It's called black hole proxy pattern. Uh, basically, it allows you to, of course, you need to test separately and automate the uh, analytics, etc. And when you do that, then maybe not on all of the pages you need all of them. So the black hole proxy pattern in short allows you to block block some of the, for example, social networking buttons, images coming from CDNs, tracking pixels, and so forth. Uh, to uh, And all of this can destabilize our tests in uh, some point. So basically, the black hole proxy pattern uh, takes all these HTTP requests, and uh, we block them. Another thing that you can do is to uh, emulate uh, network speed. Uh, for example, 3G, 4G, uh, also we can change uh, and uh, emulate for um, uh, mobile devices uh, and uh, test for responsiveness. We can do that. Also, we can even test offline uh, for testing uh, for progressive web apps such as Starbucks. Just in short, there are dedicated lectures about progressive web apps, but um, these are new types of apps that uh, basically you, with a single code base, uh, that it's usually web, uh, um, this application, you can install it in, in on your mobile devices, on your desktop, and um, it's behaving like a regular uh, application. And uh, as such, uh, this allows usually, if it's following all of the rules, it can even work offline using the new HTML5 capabilities. So this is why sometimes we need to test when the, uh, the network is off, offline, as often happens on your mobile phone, whether this works or not. And of course, another thing that we can use uh, with this integration is to capture performance-related metrics. Uh, you can use tools like Google White House, but um, um, and nowadays these commercial clouds, they actually provide you with such uh, insights uh, inside their platforms, but many often it's nice to, to have these numbers inside your tests and actually make assertions around them. Uh, so you can do that with CDP. Uh, and it's beyond uh, just uh, the execution time. Uh, the, they, they, they were a working group with Chrome, within Chrome team and uh, with collaboration with W3C Web Performance Working Group. And they have been working on standardize a set of new APIs to measure metrics uh, about that. So you can check their website. You will find that uh, in the resources. So really quick, um, with the new um, capabilities with Selenium 4, uh, you can even uh, create a basic authentication and register username and password for your whole website. You have a new network interceptor where uh, through some lambdas, you can, uh, uh, through the capture response, before it's returned, you can change the status of headers or even change the content. Uh, through the black hole pattern, it's really easy to implement it. Uh, through the network domain, you can set commands. First, you, ne you need to enable it. And then you have set block URLs where basically you provide Rex expression and you can block any uh, URLs. You can mock APIs, which is excellent for, uh, you know, which is excellent for, uh, for example, e-commerce websites where you have, for example, payment providers that, uh, you know, they they make the actual payment and calculating the taxes, and uh, we can mock that. Before that, this wasn't possible. We can simulate WebSocket operations, which is excellent for web chats, 
and event source messages. And for capturing catch traffic, again, you need to enable the network. And in the synchronized lists, when you add the listener, you can basically add uh, all of the responses received to this thread safe collection. And then we can write such assertion methods for uh, verifying that there are no error codes, that particular request was made or not made, that there are no uh, large images, etc., or that something is received from cache. Again, uh, don't worry. Uh, uh, as I said, there are many things related to CDP. Uh, you can check uh, the YouTube channel of Lambda Tests, uh, especially my videos about CDP. There are like 20 videos, 20 different lectures about each of these particular things. Uh, you can clone the repo, it's available uh, on GitHub. Uh, regarding the UI, uh, UI performance analysis, because this is a long uh, topic, uh, you can check uh, my blog, Automate the Planet. And of course, you can check the Selenium official documentation that I showed you and the CDP docs. And now uh, we have a few minutes for questions. Uh, there is one question uh, regarding, do you recommend to use browser emulation to test responsiveness of the page or better to use real mobile devices or virtual devices? Uh, to be honest, in my experience, usually this is um, a mixture between your budget and uh, you need to be careful with, uh, especially if you use real devices, uh, there are a few ways how you can go. For example, you can purchase uh, a subscription to these mobile clouds and uh, cloud platforms. Usually they are quite expensive. You can, uh, some people are uh, setting all of this uh, and buying all of the devices um, in their company and stepping all of that, but usually this is a little bit hard to set up and uh, there are many problems configuring all of that. And if this is not your core business, then maybe it's fine to use mobile emulation and I use that many of them. So for me, this is fine. But again, this depends on your business. If this is like your core thing to do, maybe you need to, to pay for these real devices. And, um, Many of the people actually are using just the uh, commercial platforms. That's all. So we have another question from Stefan. Yeah, have you used the network interceptor on end-to-end -end level or any on the component integration level? Uh, to be honest, I used uh, we use this heavily actually for, uh, because my company, we are working in, uh, you know, uh, we're working on enterprise projects for big companies that they already have automation, but we're working on the core stuff. Uh, and in one of these projects, actually, like a few months ago, I developed a functionality where we had to test uh, a really hardcore engine for optimizing websites. And in order to do that, we need actually to capture the traffic and see what's going on after the optimization. And to do that, actually, we use network interceptors. Uh, and the thing that I showed you um, with capturing the traffic, modifying the traffic, and then working with that. So I don't know how to call these tests. I usually prefer not end-to-end, -end, but system tests, because actually, actually there are even system of system tests. And we use that to, to test this type of really hardcore uh, systems. So yeah, I use them and it's working fine, especially with, with the latest releases when they fix some of the bugs that were initially present in the alpha and the beta. So that's all the, the questions we have for now. Um, in the chat, if anyone's got any last questions and feel free to post them but um i know you you mentioned about re researching your book so do you want to um tell people what, what's coming in that yeah actually this is my biggest ever project it's um 
I have a working title. It's called uh, Automated Testing Fundamentals with C Sharp. It's actually um, including everything from uh, C Sharp, JavaScript, HTML, web driver basics, but also most advanced stuff that I showed now. Uh, it's going to include API testing. There is a dedicated book about that with really going deep into SOAP, gRPC, REST API. Uh, then we talk about mobile testing, desktop testing. Like it's a really huge project because it's consisting of four or five books over like 1,500 pages. So it will be in four or five books. I'm working already two years on that. Um, three of the books are ready. And uh, I hope that uh, maybe to the end of the year, I will finish the rest. And uh, of course, yeah. there, there is a, a process with technical editors and uh, many other folks that are involved in the process. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, mainly nowadays, I'm trying to focus on that and finish it. Awesome. Um, so someone's just posted a message, but we're just out of time. So um, maybe you can um, have a look at that one um, and share it with on Slack. Um, OK. So we, we've got a short break now uh, before the, the next uh, speaker. So we'll see you all in 15 minutes.